It's the next level. Boy, I love, love it, bro. Look at Hawkeye. Where's your arrows now? <laughs> Big strong Hawkeye riding brony. That should smile more. This is fun for us too, you know. Oh, 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 oh. Again. Aww. Enrique, again. Come on. Great. Go get more quarters. Yes. This is boring. We need to. Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Art. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoiler-full podcast about the first and... <laughs> I didn't change that in the notes, sorry. Hold on! Third. Wait, wait, hold on. This is the third episode. Okay, good. <laughs> Here is, we go. It and is the I, third episode. I'm not as sick as I was before, so I'm not hocked up on cough syrup <laughs> or NyQuil. Awesome! I caught that right away. <laughs> cool. All right. So we're going to be talking about, you know, it's going to be a spoiler full podcast of the third episode of Marvel's Hawkeye on Disney Plus and uh, the episode three, which is entitled Echoes. And the synopsis is after escaping a new threat, Clint and Kate join forces against an expanding criminal conspiracy. Very vague, very yeah. to the point. Mm-hmm. Very cool. I like that idea. But the fact yeah. is is that we jump right in and we know where we are from the last episode right into this one, which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it was really great. It was a, it was a great continuation, and we're we're getting this growing kind of conspiracy and mystery with the tracksuit mafia. We were kind of talking about before we started uh, recording. You know, there's there's so many levels here that I'm I'm really enjoying the the, the mystery and uh, whoever this. You know, it's it's we get a very kind of a, 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 a just an inkling of that there's somebody bigger, and I'll talk some more about that later on in my in my points that there's somebody. Uh, you know, kind of overreaching of this uh, this organization uh, that's that's out there, and we kind of see, we see it like we see his hand, uh, and we hear uh, Maya's ma- uh, dad call him her uncle, and I don't think he's actually her uncle, but you know, uh, it's yeah. uh, it's really really cool. And before I forget, because we were so confused about in the last in the last podcast, mm-hmm. Laura Laura Barton is Clint's oh. wife's name. Oh, okay, Laura. cool, yeah, awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm curious about how she fits into the whole perspective. I I'm looking more for Linda Cardellini in this uh in the show more than anything cuz I I've, I've always been a fan of her uh you remember Grandpa's uh, Grandma's Boy? That was mm-hmm. a, that was a mm-hmm. really good movie. I really enjoyed yeah, yeah. her in that. Yeah. She was in Grey's Anatomy. She was in the Scooby-Doo movies. You know, I really just enjoy her as an actress and her comedic wit and also yeah, you know, all the stuff that she has to offer. It, you know, I, I want to see more of her, especially within the Marvel universe. So, but uh, yeah, th- this episode I really enjoyed for the fact of more for the action. We got a little bit more dramatic with uh, with with Clint and Kate because of his hard of hearing and his hearing aid being destroyed at this point. So th- there's a lot of like. Communication, miscommunication, communication mm-hmm. here and there, but they're working together, and I, I think Clint starts to see it as well as Kate. But Clint's like kind of struggling with that and doesn't want to mm-hmm. be bothered, yeah, <laughs> because he's trying to protect her. But uh, to me, I found it very comedic, very dramatic, and on top of that, you could see the relationship that they have with one another. He does respect her. After realizing what she can do, and she is just amazed as always, especially when, you know, he's able to shoot that one arrow into uh, that uh, duct tape that's uh, holding her to a Mm -hmm. kid's ride. But yeah, yeah, uh, to me, uh, to me, this was a fun filled experience after they get out of that situation. So uh, to me, I really had a good time with this one. Um and, and it's, it's a lot of stuff that we expected to from the trailers that we got to because we, we kind of got that. We didn't get the, the rolling eyes of Clint when she talked about trick arrows. That's the mm-hmm. only thing I'm going to give out of that. So we never got that. <laughs> but uh, with that, we should move right into our top fives. You know, it should be a lot easier if we were facing the other way. way. You were facing the other way. Yeah, just a... 
They were communicating. Hang on. And I guess I'll start because you sure. started last week, right? Yeah. All right. Cool. So uh, my number five would be the introduction to Echo and how she was brought up. So we see Maya as a young kid, how she was brought up by her father, and she was put into a regular school. Uh, she was taught basically from people who were of hearing, and she was learning very fast and was very adept at it. But her father, she questioned her father at night or after school or something, and then he says, well... Uh, it, allows you to adapt more and you you are far better than these people and it, which is true because she learns at a rapid rate and she does everything through visual and she was able to excel far more than those kids that are of hearing mm -hmm. and to me that was really cool for us to see uh, i i really found that very interesting and these are her skills that that help her in her life and it shows the type of person who she is and who Echo is as the character. And we also referenced that last week when I mentioned Echo, but that that's who this is. And uh, her father knew better when, you know, than she did. But unfortunately, she loses her father. And that's the reason why we're going through all this, because uh, she feels that Ronan had killed her father. And uh, because he was on a job, because uh, he was, I, I think it was based upon the crime boss, but I could be mm -hmm. wrong. Well, no, and this is my number five as well, is just kind of the, that whole, her her upbringing and, and who she is and the fact that not only is she hearing disabled, but she also has an artificial leg, you know, which we don't have a backstory for. We don't know why she's missing uh, part of her leg or missing the bottom, you know, that that part of her leg there. Yeah. Um, and we do see, I mean, you, you just mentioned it. She witnesses, I mean, she sees Ronan kill her father. Mm -hmm. And she witnesses that. And then, you know, that the, that's the whole bloody handprint on the side of her face kind of thing. That was her dad. And she saw Ronan do that. And that's what Clint is talking about when he talks about with uh, with Kate later on in the episode where he talks about the fact that Ronan went through. He says, you know, he, he talks about how they how Ronan attacked the tracksuit mafia and how that he he got rid of one of their distribution warehouses. And then he went after and he calls it upper management. And so I don't you know, I'm assuming like her father was kind of, and that's kind of what we get at the end when she's asked that one guy, you know, well, if my father was making these decisions, would you question them? And the guy's like, well, no. And she's like, I'm in charge. So she kind of takes over that role of, of kind of leading at least this, you know, kind of, it's almost like she's like a lieutenant kind of thing. Yeah. Like, uh, like of the, you know, so she's one, of, she's not the main boss, but she's one of the kind of upper echelon bosses and we talked about a little bit beginning before we started recording that mm -hmm. there is this instant where we see the flashback to her as a kid where the father says your uncle and i'm putting that in air quotes uncle yeah. is going to take you home and we see a man with some kind of a suit and a black like he's got a black uh long sleeve shirt underneath his suit uh talking to her and that's mm -hmm. all we see though is his hand and so we see that but we don't really know who that person is. And I don't know if that person is, is Jack or if it's someone that we haven't seen yet. I've, I'm kind of part of me wants to lean towards that. It's Jack, mm. but I'm not just, it, it doesn't feel like he's high enough up in the organization that he would be that guy, but maybe he is. I don't know. I I'm really confused. We don't know. About, yeah. Well, yeah. We, we won't know until we get further into the, the show. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, uh, the, the one thing that you keep mentioning the hand, mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> Oh my know, goodness. Yes. And <laughs> you're going to, the hand, I, I'm going to keep meant his hand. Yeah, I, know the hand. hand. <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, but the hand, <laughs> the hand. The oh hand. my God, Mark. So oh, I, okay. I, I, I'm, still, I'm still, I'm still <laughs> trapped on that idea of like the hand. Uh, it, it could be worse. I could be talking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and we could yeah. be talking about the, the foot. foot. The foot, yeah, yeah. At least we're not talking about Mephisto. All right. So any, but anyway, I was, that opening scene was great. That It gave us an opportunity, you know, it gave us a little yeah. bit of sympathy for her and we, we get to see not only some sympathy for her, but we see her, we see why she has this vendetta against the Ronin. 
Yeah, I do agree with that. Yeah, w- w- at least we get that whole uncovering of who she is, uh, a little bit mm-hmm. of that whole history. I-, I just love that aspect. That was your number five, right? My five, yep. All right, uh, my number four would be Kate and Clint stuck on the kids' rides. <laughs> uh, Kate confronts basically Clint during that whole ride and talks to him. And Colin points out that uh, he was going to save her name until he she crashed through the skylight, basically. He goes, yeah, you kind of ruined everything when you came through with the suit and you crashed. Now we're trapped and we're duct taped to this and we're on kids' rides. So, uh, and Clint is there to save the situation at this point. So, uh, he is so aware regardless of his loss of hearing so he's able to get out he's able to get out of the duct tape and she goes how did you do that and he he's able to maneuver and get himself away and i i still am on that whole Riggs and murtaugh feeling about these two unfortunately i i know all right brought, yeah i'm not no i'm not gonna i'll let you have it you can have it it's your, but, it's your but, opinion man but that's that's my whole thing it's like he's the grumbling uh elder that has been doing this for so long but he's teaching her as he goes even though he doesn't want to teach her and that that's my whole feeling about this whole lethal weapon you know correlation to this whole uh this whole story especially since it's done within what Christmas, which you and I covered on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. So, like I said, I'm gonna let you have. You can have your opinion on it. I mean, I don't, I don't see it. I'll let you have it, though. I mean, he's an he's an older white man, and she's a white, a young white girl, as opposed well, to an older black gentleman and a almost equal in age white male who he's not really teaching rigs it's not anyway i'm not i'm not gonna argue with you about it i'm gonna let you have it if you but if you want to go with it i'm just yeah. saying it's like the teacher teaching the the student at this point okay and, like and, i said i'm gonna let you have it man i'm not i'm she's, not gonna she's argue a, she's a bit kind of you know sporadic kind of a okay. little crazy you know sure but yeah I, like that's i said my man, whole you can, about kate you know, you can grasp it all the straws you want. I'm gonna let you have it. <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of my, my my this is my same number four. It's kind of that same scene where they're they're kind of on those uh those uh he's on the unicorn and she's on the whatever she was on. Uh, but I you know I love that there's that moment where she picks up on the guy yeah. who is who's had this argument with his girlfriend and like it's it totally like the first time I saw it, the first time I watched it, I was kind of like, what? Where is this coming from? Because like it it almost take, took me out of it a little bit, but at the same time. She's. I can see what she's doing. That she's kind of trying to build a, a rapport with yep. this guy who's yep. her captor. Head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> over this Imagine Dragon uh, tickets, and you know she tells Clint, "Well, man, it's all about basic human stuff." But it just. It was just really. It was really cool <laughs> to see her. You know, pick up on that with the guy, and then the guy. You know, when she starts to give him some advice, the guy's like, "Wait, wait, stop. Let me go. Let me go get. Uh, let me go get some paper so I can write down what you're telling me, and then." But after he leaves, you know, the big guy, whoever the, the big guy is, is like, well, maybe I should rip your throat, your tongue out of your throat to her because she talks too much. So it was but it brings us back into the whole the, the yeah. scene that I just I it was really, really good. That whole that whole exchange is there's again, I've said it about these Marvel shows and the Marvel movies is they have a way of blending humor, drama, action all of it together to where mm-hmm. we, we have this heart. And I just love it. So, yeah, the the, the writers have really got mm-hmm. a niche um to this. I, I think they uh I think they took a, a course in the Russo brothers school of how to do Marvel films at this point. And I, I think they hit it on the head and they know because Marvel seems to understand how to do movies and now T V at this yeah. point. Now mind you a lot of people are not happy with Falcon and a Winter Soldier or some people are just not happy with uh, WandaVision altogether. But honestly, I'm happy with what we're getting because, you know, honestly, we're not the ones that are riding this. We're the ones that are here for the ride. And that's how I feel. I'm mm-hmm. enjoying this ride. And we got this with uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. We had a great time when we were we were talking about those particular episodes, as well as uh, WandaVision with Ben and I and and damien and and greg but the thing is is that 
you know, the we can't control the situation, but we get really exhilarating and fun shows from these episodes. Sometimes a little bit more dramatic than we really want to, because even with WandaVision and with Falcon, we had some, you know, heavy drama within it. Uh, we haven't really hit that heart to this particular show, and I think that will probably come by episode four or episode five, just before the end, where it's going to hit really hard and home. I, I think they kind of touched on that within this uh, this particular episode with Clint's hearing loss and how he had to deal with Kate, but they kind of brushed over it if you think about it with the car chase and she's trying to communicate with him if you recall and <laughs> no, no, I, I, i'm just letting you go man because it's i mean you're this is all stuff that i've gotten my points so oh okay you know, all we, right. can either, we can either keep going this well, we can or, keep you know, going yeah, dude yeah, yeah i mean go on go on with your number three because this is all stuff it's all good stuff yeah yeah, the, the chase within the episode, to me, it was very, very important to me because mm -hmm. uh, it was very tactical regardless of basically, you know, Clint's hearing loss. And he's a bit clumsy but knows how to deal with the situation, as he always does. But the thing is, is the hearing loss is the, a detriment to the way he's able to work with others. And uh, he never had that issue with Natasha before, as far as we know, because... Everything that happened between, uh, you know, in 2012 during that whole chaos in the very beginning, uh, the first Avenger film, and then you got Endgame, and you got uh, Ultron, everything just built up to his hearing loss. And that's what sucks for somebody who is very much attuned to his world, and it sucks. But the thing is, is that I, I, Kate is very understanding and is able to capture onto and work with him, which I really found is a great rapport. Like I said, I, I'm looking at the very end of the, the particular series or the season, as it were, and seeing that Kate being part of his family and being embraced by his wife, Laura, and his and his kids uh, Maybe, yeah. I don't yeah. know. I mean, I love, I love what you're talking. Like, like, it, you're, you're kind of mixing two different, different things there. But I love because I, I'm, I, I, I agree with you, but I disagree with you about the whole hearing loss thing. I think they treated it great. I think it was, I think it was a great mix between Echo, between Maya, kind of like disregarding him, saying that well, you're using this technology, you're mm. uh, as a crutch, and, yeah. and she basically kicking it out of his ear and then and then smashing it. But then we see, like you said, we see that he and Kate are still able to kind of communicate, even though he can't hear her, and she realizes, oh wait, he can't hear what I'm saying. But they still have this great rapport in this great communication during that whole scene which mm. which I just absolutely love the whole thing with the car and and when they're and I'll kind of flip some things up the whole dialogue between them is really great with them saying almost the same thing uh, again it becomes this idea of the the, the team up is yeah, is the, really really the great patient that they have mm -hmm. yeah and they're using and they're using that hearing that hearing loss and the fact that you know there's that moment and I think I've got it in my quotes where he says something like you know I I, I can't hear anything you're saying but I'm assuming you're on board I've got that quote down down Aww. below you know which is great because it's just one of those moments where you see them working in unison together even though they can't hear each other and he doesn't understand but yet like he's throwing the arrows in the back seat and she's like well wait what, what you that can't arrow? have that nope. Nope. yeah you can't have that one why is you know what, why is that arrow three times you know worse than this arrow and and stuff it's it just it was a great it, it's the whole thing was really really great um and I love your, your the trick arrows. Her, you know, <laughs> realizing that there are, there are trick arrows and yeah. her using them at the different things. Uh, I think my favorite one was the the net. I don't know if it was a net or what it was. The one that grabbed uh, all the Christmas trees and yep. pulled them yep. onto the truck. I thought that was great. She's like, I don't know what this one's called, you know. And uh, so it was it was really really great. And again, they had that moment on, on the subway car when they both. Um, are are sympathetic about the dog. They're both worried about the dog with the, almost the same exact dialogue where she says, you know, we need to take the dog for a walk because he's been cooped up all day. And then he says, even though he hasn't heard her, he says, hey, we should take the dog for a walk. He's been cooped up all day. It's <laughs> it's really, really great. And I, I, think they, I think they dealt with it really, really well. They did. They did. Yeah. And, uh, that was your number three? 
Um, kind of. I kind of incorporated some of my number two into into there because I've got some more stuff to talk about. Uh, um, th- yeah, then I'll well, talk about the fight in the warehouse when we get to that. Yeah, yeah. Well, you actually kind of mixed some of my number two, uh, and that would have to go with the trick hours. But you kind of like uh, you know with the trick hours thing too. We we get the explosive arrow, a plunger arrow, and she mm-hmm. kind of mocks it, going, "You got a plunger arrow? What's that for?" Yeah, apparently she didn't realize what it was for until they got onto the train. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then after a cable trap arrow, which is what I call that whole net thing that we were talking about, they have acid arrows, which uh, kind of burns everything, uh, the explosive arrow as well. And then we got the blue goo arrow. And then, of all things, too, a USB arrow. She goes, what yeah. is this for? <laughs> Hold on. Reference to what if. That's such a great callback to what if that I thought was was really, really cool. The fact that I didn't put it in my notes, but it was amazing to have that callback because it just – it puts it in, again, where I think – and uh, Kevin Feige has said that the what if – um is part of the canon. And yep. so we see that, yes, there is a USB arrow. I thought that was great. Yep. And then lastly, the Pim Arrow, which is one where it could increase in size like Ant-Man or Giant-Man, as it were. And then he's able to shoot that and to drop that big, huge arrow on those cars. <laughs> and I thought that, that that was pretty awesome. And it, it's like for the fact that it's like um, – it's like I, I just referenced back to Civil War. It's like you got it, Arrow Guy. You got it, and Ant Man's on the arrow. Remember, mm-hmm. and yeah. uh, I just like had the feels of that, and yeah. to me, it was like, all right, this is perfect. This is awesome. Very cool. Yeah. Um. So let's see. Uh, one that we haven't talked about um, is is kind of that fight in the warehouse that we we we've, we've kind of talked a little bit about it. But I, I was really I love the choreography of it. I love that moment where Clint um, hits Maya's uh, artificial leg with the bow and arrow, and there's kind of a clank. You yeah. know, and he does like a double take where he doesn't realize what it is. And then she kicks him in the ear and his, his, uh, like you said, his hearing aid flies out and she smashes it with her, with her foot. I love seeing Kate using the shopping cart. We saw that in the first couple episodes when she was using the wine bottles and stuff, um, that she has that, that, a, that ability to kind of, um, you know, uh, fight with whatever is around her. And so it was really, really great to see all that. Like I said, I love the choreography. It was yeah. so smooth. Of, of, and I'm assuming because it, it looked really – it did really well with Jeremy Renner when he's when he's rotating and he's spinning. And when he does the, the, the arrow shot behind his back was the one that stood out to me today watching it for the second time that I thought was just so cool was we have him. He's kind of in this crouch position where one leg is extended. The other one is 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 bent and he's just got his arms behind him mm. shooting an arrow that was just – it was just amazing uh, again. So I just love the, the fight scene choreography that they've been doing for these shows. Yeah, they're really good. They really take the time out to do this. And uh, and to point out what you, you just mentioned, too, with Echo hitting his ear and then him hitting her leg, it's pointing out their uh, their issues. Mm-hmm. Their disabilities, life, right. Their disabilities right. at that point. So that, that was pretty interesting for the fact that he didn't really destroy hers, but she destroyed his at that point. And uh, basically... She was putting him on her level because she is deaf. But um, I- I'm curious if uh, he's going to lose an appendage because she already has a missing appendage. Um, that's a good question. Um, but we don't know. You know, we we don't know how the show's going to go if they do that to Clint. Um, I'm sorry, Jeremy. <laughs> you know, uh, but uh, I, I I you know, more kudos to him. Yeah, like I said, I, I kind of referenced the whole Arrow thing with Oliver Queen last week when we talked about how Ollie had one arm. I'm wondering if they'll actually do something like that with this, which kind of references almost like with uh, the original Logan comic book that was out there. But I highly doubt it. Uh, I was like, that's a lot of speculation there, man, that I'm not even. That is a lot, to- and I'm not going <laughs> to go into it anymore. But uh, that that's just me thinking outside the box. And honestly, I'm taking the show as it is. But, you know, the fact that they actually acknowledge that they attacked both of each other's issues. Uh, you know, obviously, Clint is 
is hard of hearing at this point, and she can't walk. But she's also deaf, but I don't think they'll do that to uh, Clint. But, uh, which leads me into uh, my number one. So, where the story goes, which would be Kate gets Clint on board to find out what is going on with Jack and Armand. Or, uh, yeah, yeah, Armand, who is dead. But uh, Jack seems like uh, a character from the comics, but I really can't put a finger to that particular character, and I'm not going to go into it. But if you listeners out there have a clue as to what I'm talking about, please let me know. And let us know uh, within the comments below um, when we post this onto our Facebook page. But nonetheless, uh, he is an issue, and this is the reason why we are having these problems, I think, overall. Uh, I just love the show as it unfolds as we move along. Uh, I'm curious to see as who is the big bad, and I really mm-hmm. want to see who that big bad is. You know, I've already put in my speculations like the hand, kingpin, blah blah blah. But you know, mm-hmm. we'll we'll see as it happens. Uh, so my number one is just I I love that little and again you, we talked a little bit about the 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 drama of the sh- of the show of the series and we have this moment between Clint and Kate where they're in that diner and and she's you know it was it was there was a kind of a funny moment where she's gushing about how she's dreamed about this moment uh, all her life and, and she's yeah. so happy and so proud and then he puts his hearing aid in and she's like has that thing been out the whole time but but then they have this really <laughs> cool discussion about how she basically she wants to be a superhero she wants to be a hero who's going to help people and yeah. he's basically telling her you know if you do that you're going to have there's things you're going to have to sacrifice there's there's things you're going to have to give up and i love that she has this very positive response to it though that that when he says he's not a role model she's like no you are look look what you're doing you're here helping a person <laughs> out just because you thought somebody might get hurt it's it, it's just a cool conversation between the two of them where where she's kind of building him back up and he's again mentoring her in this in this this life of what this life is going to be is you know if you choose this route it's going to be tough it's not going to be easy um so and so it's really really cool that she talks about the ronin because i'm almost a little bit surprised that she didn't figure out that he was the Ronin. Ronin. Yeah, you I know. know. <laughs> um, I, I kind of half expected her when she said, well, you know who the Ronin is and he, and the person is very close to you. Um, because she's acknowledging that she realized, yes, you you lied that the Ronin isn't dead. You, mm-hmm. you know, she's she realized it, but she's not put put it together that he is the Ronin. So yeah. I, it's going to be an interesting t- to see unfolding, like you said, how this series, if they're going to deal with that um, or if – Echo is ever going to find out that he – Maya, excuse me. Uh, she's not been identified as Echo yet in the series. Uh, yeah. Maya, if she ever finds out that he's the Ronin, you know, how is that going to affect uh, things going forward? So, yeah. No, I'm excited for the, the – la- you know, there's only three episodes left, man. Three hours is all we've got left of this. Yeah, I know. So, I know. I wonder what they unfold within that time too. Exactly. Exactly. But, uh, yeah, I, I do agree. Yeah. And, and I really do appreciate that little, little banter with her and uh, with Kate and Clint, just like you said. The fact that it's like, you know, it's like, that's your hero. I want to be a hero. You're actually doing what you're saying you don't want to do, but right. I'm here right now, right in front yeah. of you. So, but, yeah, it, it's pretty cool and awesome. So we've got some notes here? Yeah, we do. Um, I'll start off with the first one, which is pretty cool because, uh, I kind of mentioned it already. The, the 72 Dodge Challenger that was referenced within the episode when, um, Clint and Kate are running outside, getting away from the jumpsuit mafia. Uh, he goes, Oh, I'm not going to destroy a 72 Dodge Challenger. Yeah. Just to get away. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to break into that. Blah, 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 blah. Mind you, it was already Maya's, if you think about it. But the fact is, it gets destroyed in the end, unfortunately. Uh, in the comic books that this uh, references to is, it's a Hawkeye issue, but originally the, the original owner was Natasha. 
It oh, was Black nice. Widow. And it, and Hawkeye accidentally does destroy it <laughs> at the end. So nice. uh, unfortunately, it gets destroyed too at the end of this uh, episode. But it, it's mm-hmm. not Natasha's, <laughs> at <Yeah>. least. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, I love that little conversation that Maya has with her father about dragons. Oh at the yeah, especially just coming off from uh, Shang Chi and the the dragons that we had in, in Shang Chi, I thought was really really great. It was really cool to see those referenced here. And it, again, it, it may have just been a subtle thing, and who mm-hmm. knows? I don't know if Hawkeye if if it was written or finished or whatever before Shang Chi or after. These things have been so mixed up. But it just it was it was cool to hear a reference to dragons and to have known that we just watched Shang Chi. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it, it shows that it's real mm-hmm. because we got that in Shang Chi. Uh, next up for me would be the tracksuit mafia is also something that within the comic run of Hawkeye as well. So that was uh, part of the storyline within the comic run itself. And this is something that Marvel Disney has decided to use within this universe since it was a mainstay within that particular comic run. And uh, I'll, I'll go into that later and where you could get more information based upon this. Because uh, there's a YouTube channel that you listeners really should uh, be tuning into if you want to get clued into the comics that are related to what this is adapted from. Um, mine, I, I thought it was interesting that when we find out, you know, we know earlier that Clint knows some ASL or American Sign Language. We find out in this episode yeah. that he's really not as proficient as maybe we thought he was. Maybe his son is a little bit better off than he is. Um, but it, it, it is interesting that we find he does know a little bit, but he doesn't know enough no. to, you know, hold a conversation with Maya. She still needs to use Kazi as the interpreter. And they do get his, his, uh, hearing aid fixed pretty easily, it seemed like. Um, even though it was smashed, so. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's, it, it basically humanizes him in the sense that, you know, he is somebody who is most recent of hard of hearing. And I'm pretty sure w- with kids, they pick up things very quickly. So yeah. his youngest son picked up probably ASL very fast. Whereas I, I guess his youngest son is teaching him how to, to do that. And all I could say is something about cookies and milk. <laughs> and then he had to, you know, he had to do that. But, um, yeah, I honestly, I would love to learn how to do ASL. I, I only know a few phrases at most, and it sucks. But uh, it, it's very important to stay in age too, because a lot of people losing hearing. Um, but you know, I, I find it it very it humanizes the character too, and the fact that we all suffer in some way in our life. And he is suffering from hearing loss. And, uh, you know, it, it does humanize him. Especially when Maya just breaks that stupid hearing aid. And she has to, you know, it's like just mocks him. Yeah, I said that. So, but yeah, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, I know. Yeah. What's what's next? Uh, last one for me would be the dog within the comic with, that we see here. Because he's got a squinty eye. Uh, in the comic book, he's known as Lucky. Okay. Which is something that I'm very fond of since when I was a child. We had a golden retriever very much like that dog. Now, mind you, he didn't have one eye. <laughs> but he mm-hmm. was also called Lucky because the dog escaped death so many times but was brought into our house. And that that dog was so amazing to have. But uh, in this case, this dog is so lucky that, that he has Kate and Clint in his life. And I think that's going to be a mainstay. I, I think Clint's going to wind up bringing that dog back home. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, my only other uh, the couple ones I've got is just, I, it was so touching to see Kate helping him talk to his son on the phone. I thought was, that was really, really great. And, and then uh, that moment when he realized that when the son is like, well, it's okay that you're not going to be home for Christmas. It just, it really touched me, you know, knowing that, that even though I'm not married with, with kids, but I have a family and knowing all the Christmases that I missed being away from home and stuff. So, uh, it was, it really touched me. And then, uh, the last thing I thought was really, it was just funny was mm-hmm. that the, the moving trucks that the tracksuit mafia is using when they're leaving, uh, their kind of hideout, uh, is the, on the side, the stencil is trust. A bro, so I thought that was kind of cool. <laughs> Trust a bro, <laughs> the Russian mafia. <laughs> All right, uh, we're moving right along into quotes. Uh, uh, the I only d- one I've the only one I've got is uh, I've already kind of mentioned it before. 
It's mm-hmm. when he's trying to tell her what to do about the car, and he says, "I have no idea what you're." Or no, it's actually when they're when they're trying to disable the truck. You talked about the, the arrow that expanded. Uh, yeah. and he says, "I have no idea what you're saying. Just assuming you're on board." I thought it was just a hilarious line. It is, but the thing is, it's a it it's a constant thing within that particular scene because they start to realize, like, "Oh, well, we should feed the dog." Oh, yeah, yeah, we should feed the dog. Yeah. First one for me would be uh, Echo signing. You rely too much on technology. You kind of brought this up before. But Clint states that, that he relies on two sticks and a string because he can't sign very well because he is hard of hearing and not deaf. And, you know, within that, we get a respect. And uh, we we don't see it right now or right away. But I think in time, we'll we'll see it between Echo and Clint. I'm not saying that they're going to be best of friends, but... I, I think that we will see that later on. Uh, last one for me would be uh, Kate saying, yes, boss, when Clint tells her to get in and that they are not smashing a 72 Dodge Challenger. Thank goodness it wasn't white because, you know, I am a huge Vanishing Point fan and um, uh, a 73 Dodge Challenger. I know this is a 72, but even still, <laughs> mm-hmm. I would yeah. not want to see that destroyed. <laughs> And I, I mean, it really hurt me to see this one destroyed. I was going to say, whether it's white or not, I mean, it was terrible to see it destroyed. So, I just, you know, nice, good muscle car like that. Damn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, we had no feedback on our Facebook page. We didn't get any audio feedback as I checked our email earlier. But uh, uh, some recent news. Well, obviously, we're going to get uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. And we've seen a lot of trailers that are coming out, and the most recent ones showing more than one Spider-Man. So how do you feel about that, Steve? Well, you know, I, I didn't get a chance to watch the most recent trailer, so I haven't seen it yet. Um, but, I you know, it's it's been – we've been speculating about No Way Home that it was going to include the other Spider-Man uh, as well uh, as uh, – uh, Tom Holland. So it's, it's going to be cool to see. Uh, I'm excited for it. I think I'm a little, you know, I, I did watch one YouTube video where they were speculating that the previous trailer had kind of been edited to not show the extra spider, the other spider man's yeah. in the video. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, that kind of bothered me. It didn't bother me um, that the YouTube video uh, was kind of figured it out, but it, it it bothered me if it ends up being true that they've edited these trailers, then suddenly it, it comes down to this, this, this point where why should I watch trailers? Like, I know there's a lot of people that swear off trailers completely. And if they're actually going to mislead us hmm. in trailers, which we have seen them do. Yeah. In with the last infinity few years, wars. Yeah. Infinity know, war. They did that um, with the Hulk. Mm-hmm. If you remember, uh, they, they kind of put Hulk in the group of running towards Thanos and everybody, and then they, that did not happen within the actual okay. the movie. But that's so. what I'm saying is is it just seems a little – It's it, it just – I don't know. It just bothers me that they would do that. I understand a kind of why they want to keep the speculation, but yeah. then just cut that – don't have that scene in the trailer – or if don't put trailers to, out. <laughs> well, no, I mean, do trailers. I love, I love watching trailers, but I'm saying don't edit the trailer to, to deceive us. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. deceive us. Yeah, Just they keep did that, that with scene. Rogue One too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, okay. I, I know yeah, what you're saying. Yeah. So that. So and I, and like I said, I you reference. I have not watched the most recent trailer that dropped. I have not had a chance to watch it. I, yet, so. I'm looking forward to going seeing the movie as it is. Absolutely. I've got my ticket. I've got my ticket already. Purchased I didn't get on. my ticket yet, but honestly, I will just go day of. And, uh, I'm pretty sure even though it's like December, the drive-in will be open. I will go there with snow on my windshield and I will watch it. But, uh, yeah, I, I am a huge Spider-Man fan then in, fan, in a sense that mm-hmm. I'll just go out and go see it at that time. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I know everybody else is looking forward to it. Uh, at least we know that we're getting the villains from the previous Spider-Man films in it, like with Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, uh, Andrew Garfield Spider-Man. We're getting those particular villains, obviously, even if they give us maybe, what, five minutes of Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire, I'll be happy. I'll be a kid that is crying ear to ear 
and I, I would just enjoy it for the fact that they actually brought us the multiverse that we need. And that's all I'm looking forward to. Sure. You know, uh, to me, to me, this is probably one of the best films uh, that's going to be coming out. Sony's going to hit a lot of money because Ghostbusters just came out. We got the new Ghostbusters movie, and I saw that in the theaters. I thought it was amazing, and I really enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to listening to Damien and Ben talk about that, and on their on the Damien's podcast, watch it in the '80s. So. Uh, and then now they're going to have – Sony's going to have Spider-Man No Way Home. So I really think this is going to be a, a big thing for Sony this year. And they already announced that we're going to get three more Spider-Man films. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. I, I'm curious to see what the truth is within that. Right now I'm just speculating. Right now I just want to watch this particular movie. So uh, I hope you guys are out there that are uh, listening are going to go out to see it. And let us know what you think when it comes out too, because I'm going to go see it, and we're probably going to cover it. <laughs> sure. But uh, with that, that that's it for uh, comic news at this point. Uh, uh, basically, because you know, uh, eventually we'll get to Eternals, and we'll cover that eventually. Uh, in between Hawkeye and stuff like that, but uh, we should move right along into podcast recommendations. What do you think? Oh yeah, for me, um, I I want to recommend Strange Indeed. It's a podcastica. We've we've talked about it before on here. It's a podcastica podcast, but they are covering both Lock and Key, uh, which is a Netflix series, and Dexter New Blood, which is on Showtime. Uh, you know, two very different shows, but they're covering both those right now until uh, Lock and Key finishes, and then Dexter New Blood will will wrap up a few weeks after after that. So I encourage everybody if you're if you're interested in those shows, check out Strange Indeed. Yeah, definitely. For the fact that I've been following Dexter, I've been watching it, and I'm really a big fan. And I love how uh, Rima and Paik have been covering Dexter on Strange Indeed. So I have to suggest that as well. Uh, well, next up with YouTube recommendations, well, Comics Explained, and I've already mentioned it before, but Comics Explained with Rob, he gives a lot of information about the Hawkeye comics that explains a lot of where the story is based upon. So I highly recommend that you look at uh, what Rob has done on Comics Explained on YouTube for the fact that he'll it, he'll give you the brief synopsis or the story of Hawkeye, where we get the stories within the particular show. Uh, he's not going to talk about the show directly. He's only going to talk about the comics. But you could actually piece together where, you know, with the uh, dog, uh, the jumpsuit, Mafia, all that good stuff, and his hearing loss as well. So uh, he talks about all that. So check out Comics Explained on YouTube with Rob. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. Well, we uh, we love to hear from our listeners. We haven't had any feedback lately, but uh, we do wish that you would submit us some feedback. Um, obviously, you are listening to us on your podcast player of a choice. We are available out there on Spotify, Google Play, Deezer, Apple Podcasts, wherever you find your podcasts. Uh, go ahead and download us there. Check it out. Panels to Pixels podcast. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a five-star review. We, we'd love to hear from you on those as well. We have a website, which is panels to pixels podcast.com. Uh, we love to interact with you on our Facebook page. We put out a, a post every week through Instagram and Facebook that uh, to encourage you to tell us what you thought of the upcoming episode. And that is just facebook.com slash panels to pixels. We are on Twitter. We are at panels to pixels, the number two in the middle panels to pixels. Uh, that's on Twitter. And then we are on Instagram panels to pixels podcast. Uh, also, we have an email address, which is panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels one, the TO spelled out right in the middle and the number one at gmail.com. Finally, we are on YouTube as Mark just mentioned, and we are panels to pixels podcast. Uh, check us out on there. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe and, uh, and tell us what you think. Just another Avenue for you to give us uh, some feedback and some comments. Exactly. And also if you are a fan of panels to pixels on YouTube, that is Josh's particular, you know, YouTube channel for what they do out in England. But uh, we highly recommend them as well. So if you uh, you like all the video game stuff, all the different ideas and thoughts of uh, Spider-Man and everything else that's going on within Marvel, check out the regular panels to Pixels YouTube that's out there. And uh, give it a thumbs up and subscribe and give uh, Josh some follows. 
because he's a really cool guy. Well, next week, well, we will continue on with the next episode of Hawkeye. Right now, I don't know what that episode is called, but uh, we'll we'll be covering it. So, Absolutely. Yeah. And where else can listeners hear us, Steve? Well, you know, I send various voicemails to our friends' podcasts, and uh, I just got caught up on uh, Walking Dead cast, or I just got caught up on World uh, Walking the Walking Dead World Beyond, uh, and I'm going to be sending them a voicemail, Walking Dead cast a voicemail here in the next few hours or so. Oh, so yeah, awesome. you can hear my voice on uh, various other podcasts that our friends do, and uh, when when they come back, I did send a voicemail to the Nevers podcast, which is covering Firefly right now. Oh, cool! All right, well. Not only can I be heard here on Handles the Pixels podcast, but I also can be heard on Adrenaline Cinema podcast on the Pyrocore Entertainment Network. And there we cover action films, adventure films, and suspense films, thriller films, anything to get your uh, adrenaline going. We just released the movie Duel, which uh, our friend Jeff and I had covered. Jeff picked it. Jeff's very new to podcasting, and it was his first, and I didn't realize it. So it was awesome to have Jeff on, and I'm sure you'll get to hear him more. And uh, next one up that's coming out should be They Live with Jamie and I. After that, yes, I will put out The Fifth Element. (laughs) I just have to edit. But uh, I really wanted to get uh, Jeff out there and then uh, take care of Jamie. And then beyond The Fifth Element will be the Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. So uh, just all you have to do is go to the com website, and then you can see all the feeds that are there. Or you just go to Adrenaline Cinema Podcast on Facebook. So all you have to do is facebook.com slash Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, and you can check out all the stuff that we're covering there as well. But uh, I, I look forward to uh, hearing your thoughts if you guys are interested in that kind of thing. And if you have any suggestions, please send us our way on a journal cinema podcast. And with that, I'm going to say that's our show. We, I think we covered Hawkeye episode three. Yeah. And I think we did a great job. Uh, I think we had a good time doing it too. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I just want to thank everybody for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night.